Spawning in the bottom left hand corner of this map, Foxtrot. It is going to be the orange Protoss player from Team Skillforge. It is Cuban. And his opponent is going to be the Teal Zerg player from Team Supremacy. I do believe that it was. I'm not 100% sure on that. But it is no guard. So a best of one in the Gover Starcraft 2 Cup number 394 in the round of 16. Will, winner will move forward. The loser of this game is going to be knocked out. Not a PVZ. However, this time we have a different spawning position than in the game between Namshar and DMC. So let's see how this is going to go. Still the same fact remains in the natural base if you get your Nexus down. It's still pretty far away from your ramp towards your natural base. And of course there is also a back door. Kind of a back door to your natural base. That you can just knock out and stream into the main base. All away from that photon overcharge that can be casted. But Cuban so far opening up very standard with a gateway. Not trying to go for a Nexus first like DMC did. Also one gas geyser will be taken. Now, is this going to be a hatchery first? Yes, it is going to be a hatchery first from Nogard. He's not scared of Cuban at all. He's not worried about any forge shenanigans. No cannon rushes. And if they are on the map, then he is confident that he will stop them. Otherwise, you're not going to go for a build like this. But what is this? This is a very early drone to send out. He's just going to scout around. He wants to see where the drone is. Because he does expect that there is going to be a scout at this point. Spawning pool will be put down. But will he stay gasless for now and still take his third base? It's not something that you see a whole lot of nowadays because 4 gate pressure can be so insanely powerful. But everything is still looking standard and that's exactly what Cuban will realize at this point. Now the third base can be a little bit weird. It is going to be very open. And Zerg players like Nogard are going to be very happy about that. You need an infinite number of force fields if you want to block that off. Get into a good position. Of course, you can also take this back expansion. But there's only a small choke heading towards that location. And that is going to be more favorable for Protoss players. But still, you need to take out the rocks first. And, well, that means that the Zerg can attack you from this angle. And also, of course, at your natural ramp. So it's still spread you kind of thin. But the natural base will be taken for Cuban. He went for his very standard one gate expand. And the Mother's Core is going to keep him safe from any early shenanigans. Now the gas guys will be taken right now for no guard. No third base just yet. But the Zerglings will be scouting out the entire map. Probe is still hiding here. So he might be up to no good. But it's not going to be scouted for quite some time. Where is this pro? What this zergling going? Now nah, he's not going to spot that zergling. Well, the probe did move, and now he is going to be spotted. Cuban, of course, did not know about that, but he wants to go into that main base once again. He wants to see how many gas have been taken, and to see if there is a third base where he has to worry about. He spots the third base. I don't think that he's even going to bother moving into the main base because from this timing. You will already know that there's going to be a gas guard inside the main base. So a forge has been started. The wall of will slowly come together at the front for Cuban 2. And with that forge, is he just going to go for a very quick third base? It is definitely an option. But we're just going to have to wait and see. Will he drop down attack or is he going to go for that expansion? I'd really like to see him just go for a two base all in on this map because it's just so insanely funky how it really operates right there. And that third base, if you take it here, it is going to be pretty impossible to hold. But still, seeing a good macro game is usually better than seeing a two base all in of some sort. But both players will just be macroing up. No all in will be coming for any of these for any of these players. So just drones, overlords and queens for no guard. Probes and pylons for a Q-Band. But he's mixing in a few of those sentries, a few stalkers. Because, well, Q-Band cannot just produce a lot of units just on the fly. He only has one warp gate to work off of. Second one just finished up. But let's see 
what is attack going to be? The plus one attack upgrade is halfway of the way done. So we could see a big explosion of gateways or that third base come down. Now the third base is going to be the decision for Cuban. The Zergling spotting it immediately. And the Zergling speed will be spotted by Cuban. Immediately that Mickey Mouse set up with the two ears over the Nexus. For the pylons that can hug that photon cannon perfectly. He's going to follow this up with a Twilight Council inside his main base. So he can go for the plus two attack upgrade. And of course get Blink for the early defense. Now what is the response going to be for no guard? This is still a pretty early third base. So he might try to punish it or he's just going to macro up. Maybe take a fourth base even. So far he is just drawing up. He has just produced six overlords. There is a roach worn out. So he might go into roach production right now. Five R started up. He did get an evolution chamber where he's most likely going to upgrade that plus one attack upgrade for him. But he might try and push on put on some pressure on Cuban very soon. Cuban back at home is also getting his own extra set of gateways to create a little bit of a wall off. But still, that's a pretty big arc that Roaches can get on this third on this third nexus. Oh, excuse me for that. But Roaches, he's still droning a little bit. Eight drones on the way. But he is already at 59 drones. So unless he gets a fourth base, it's not going to be necessary to get too many more. But the Roaches will be streaming across the map. Roach speed has started up and those rocks will be worked on. Two photon cannons will be here to greet those Roaches. But two photon cannons are not going to be enough by far. But as I was saying, this can spread Cuban pretty thin. And all the Protoss units have to move through this choke. So if no guard is pressuring the natural, going to the third, going back to the natural, he has his entire ramp to work with, while all Cuban's units have to funnel through this little choke right there. And the robotics facility and the Dark Shrine are being warped in. Come on, force field. Oh, he's force fielding them all in. But that means that the Roach can get pretty good connections with the with the sentries. Picking off one already, but also a lot of those Roach will get taken out. Guardian Shield going to be very powerful right there. But more and more Roach. 11 more Roach on the production tab. He already has 27. And this is a lot of Roaches. The plus one attack upgrade and the speed upgrade are very close to finishing up. Going towards the third base. But there's of course a Photon Overcharge. And the probes can continue mining. But at the natural base he gets on top of those sentries. No force fields are going to make it very difficult for Cuban. He did not go for that blink upgrade, he just went for that plus two attack upgrade, which is not done just yet. An immortal is popping, that can be quite a damage dealer in this setup. Dark Templars here for the defense. Did not send them out for the attack just yet. No workers have been killed off by any of these two players, but the immortal was focus fired down. Dark Templars are gonna keep him safe, two overseers on the production tab. And looks like Cuban has held on for now, but that was already a big chunk of his army that is gone. He lost 7 sentries, 1 immortal and 3 stalkers right there. Still 29 roaches were sacrificed for that by no guard. But roaches are pretty expendable. He's on 3 base economy so he can pretty much produce roaches all day, every day. And it looks like he's going to pressure that 3rd base pretty quickly right now. But this time there is going to be an overseer. So Dark Templars are not going to help him a whole lot. Photon Overcharge is here once again. The first cannon is going to go down. This time no burrow on these roaches. An immortal has to be microed back. Nice force fields are landing. But that are all the force fields that Cuban has at this point. This is not looking good at, for him at all. A 70 supply lead for no guard. Photon overcharge is doing quite a bit of damage. But once again he's going to go for the immortal. One force fields is not going to cut it. A second immortal joining the fun right now too. Will he be able to hold? The roaches are melting away. And that photon overcharge. Seven kills on that Nexus, and those are not Zerglings, those are Roaches, so very nicely done from Cuban, and it looks like he has held on for now. Ten more Roaches on the way, but the Immortal count is going to grow. Zergling charge, a Zealot charge is going to be on the way. Three Photon Cannons at his back door, and this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. All those Immortals have to funnel through this little choke right there. The Immortals are going to be there for the damage dealing. Another set of great force fields, but the Photon, uh, the photon Cannons do get cleaned up. Now the supplies are getting close for Cuban. As his Immortal count is growing, he's going to do a, well. He's going to trade more and more cost efficiently. 50 more Roaches on the production tab, however. That's a lot of Roaches. The plus 2 attack upgrade is going to be very good. But also the Spire is on the way. And Nogard is moving in once again. 
Sentries being warped in wherever they can. He's gonna need those force fields to keep those roaches at bay so the immortals can fire upon them. No more overseer. The overseer was actually the, uh, the overseers were taken out. So Dark Templar is gonna be effective once again. He's morphing them into an Archon right there. But contaminate on that robotics facility is gonna be very painful. Also, the high yield base, the fourth base for no guard, has been taken right now. Worker count being equal and no workers really being killed off. One probe fell. No, actually, that was Cuban who was able to kill off one worker. M must have been one Dark Templar being sent in. And again, Dark Templar is going to go for the harassment. But there's an Overseer here. Those Dark Templars are going to fall right there. They don't stand a chance. But still, there's one Dark Templar at the alternative fourth base. That must be the where he killed off that drone. But he does not know about this fourth base coming down. And the Roach is making their move once again. The army is on the right side of the funnel. He actually killed off his own... His own pilot right there to make that a little bit easier. Really like that move right there. Five immortals, and he's chrono boosting two of them out. But there's gonna be the muta switch. Those immortals are gonna do damage here on top of these roaches, melting them away. But those immortals will not shoot up, and those zealots will neither. So, will he be ready for this? Does he even know about the spire that is being morphed in? No, he does not know anything about it. He does not even know about this fourth base that is gonna be mining very soon he's prioritizing the gas right there oh this can get very dicey five mutas on the way he only has sentries for anti-air and the first muta should be spotted right there also oh they already went into the natural base too he's warping in stalkers but no stargates on the map he does not have blink on these stalkers and without that he is gonna have a very tough time he's gonna go all out with those with those immortals and zealots Killing off the economy of Nogard, forcing those Mutalists to be used defensively. But Zerglings are going to be streaming into that natural base. Mutalists are inside the main base, killing off worker after worker. And Cuban will be pretty much falling apart. No more mining at the natural base, however. Dark Templar has shut that down. No more mining at the third base, but still that fourth base is up and running. And Cuban thinks he's going to go for a base trace of some sort here. But he has no idea that the fourth base is going to be the saving grace for Nogard for quite some time. And also the main base is full of spine crawlers. So let's see, will Cuban be able to hold on? The third base is going to go down. That's going to be very painful for Cuban. And actually he still has a chance if he can just take out those bases. Those immortals are actually not going to do anything. So they will be completely sacrificial. And taking out those bases can be very powerful. But he is killing off a lot of probes. 25 probes are remaining. And still no blink has been started. Roaches and Zergling. Well, one Zergling still being very annoying right there. And there's not going to be mining anytime soon for Cuban. He wants to go for the full on base trade. But those immortals will shred through those... Uh, through those spine crawlers, the drones will be pulled right there. He has the, the war prism for a little bit of micro. The Dark Templars are a present too. But will it be enough? If he goes for the full on base trade, he has to remember that this fourth base is still up and mining. Dark Templars going to be doing quite a bit of DPS. And if there is not going to be a layer anymore, that means that there's not going to be detection anytime soon. This can still go any, any which way. Three Dark Templars gonna do quite a bit of damage there are still three overseers but they're here they are in the main base and at the third base not defending the main base so let's see where this will go I still believe that no guard has a very good chance right there but those immortals they are doing just so much damage he still did not spot the high yield base that is still up and mining finally he will send a dark Templar towards that location but there is an overseer right there he will go for the hatchery, not even for the drones. He knows that mining not even going to be the most important thing. But now the Mulas are returning back home. And he will take out unit after unit right there. No more buildings inside the main base. Looking at the structure tab. One hatchery and two extractors. This is all that he has. One Dark Templar is working on it. But no more next eye for Cuban. He does not have money to start another one. And Zerglings are everywhere right there. Supplies for Cuban at 13. But those are four Dark Templars, and will he be able to get the Dark Templars, in, no, the Overseers in position? He did kill the one off at the High Yield base, and if he cannot kill that off, then it is going to be game over. So it looks like Nogard is going to take it with the Overseers and the Dark Templars right there, uh, with the Mutalists right there. And there's a GG. Nogard has taken it.
taken it and he will move forward to the quarterfinals. That was still pretty close in the end actually, but congratulations to Nogu.